memories are powerful things. In fact, I would argue that very few things in life have the same power over us than the memories we remember. Our memories can change the way we feel. When we think about something sad, we get sad. While remembering a good time can put a smile on our face. Memories keep us alive, because by remembering where danger lies, we learn to be safe. Memories are at the essence of who we are, because they allow us to be today the same person we were yesterday. They frame the experience we make and give a shape to the stories that we are yet to create. So it is almost shocking to think that something so powerful is yet so mysterious. How do we create a memory? Where do memories go when we don't remember them? What is memory? While you're living through something, even now that you're sitting down and hopefully listening to me, <laughs> thousands and thousands of your neurons are active and furiously exchanging messages with each other. We call these messages spikes. Those are small jolts of electricity that run up and down tiny wires that create connection between neurons. It is in some of those spikes, in some of those active connections in neurons, and in general, in the pattern of activity that right now is going on through your brain, that the memory of today's event is going to be born and hopefully stored for years to come. So that in the future, uh, when you will see someone that has an Italian-sounding name or talks with his hands or wears yellow shoes, some of those same connections, some of those same neurons will come to life once again. And as magic, your brain will bring you back like a time machine to this very moment, here. Right now in your brain, you're building something that it might stay with you for the rest of your life a memory. And that's how many of us treat our memories, as things that we build once and stay with us for the rest of our life, a refuge where we hide when we feel nostalgic for time gone by. We live by our memory, we swear by them, we're even ready to bet our money as if they would always be there unchanged. But how solid, how immutable are our memories? Turns out, not that much. Decades of research, in fact, has shown that memories change with time and experience. They exhibit what we call plasticity, to adapt to what we learn and what we do. Memories are plastic. When your brain builds a memory, in fact, it doesn't work like a recording device that takes information about where you are, who you're with, what you're doing, and creates a record that you can play at will. The music of our memories is not set in stone. If it is like a record, it's like a record made of clay, where the music slightly changes every time you play it, and you can write new music when you remember. Remembering, in fact, is a constructive process. It's not like looking at a picture. It's like painting one. Your brain takes information that is stored from the past and mix it together with what is available right now in the present, so that stroke by stroke, layer by layer, you build over and over again the very essence of what the memory shows us. And sometimes you use a slightly different color, sometimes you build a slightly different shape, and sometimes you even forget some of the details. And that memory is changed, maybe forever. Memories are plastic. And that's a good thing. Memories, in fact, might be at the center of a very fundamental mechanism by which our brain uses our own experience to learn how the world works to create what we call an internal model of causes and consequences, so that you can predict what happens when you do something, and use this model to tailor your choices. Now, uh, if you buy this, as I do, you immediately realize something fundamental, that memories are not built to dwell in the past. They are built to predict your future. Let's take an example. Think about the last time you were out for dinner with your friends, and you had a great time. The food was great, the wine was great, a lot of jokes, a lot of laughters. It feels good, right? Now, if you were given the choice to, do, to decide what you want to do tonight, wouldn't you want to relive that moment? You would know what to do. Call the same friends, go to the same place, order the same things, maybe. That's right, a memory from your past is guided right now the choices that you make for your future. Memories are really powerful things. Now, for memories, as for us, the ability to change is usually good. It allows us not to get stuck in the same patterns of behavior, even when those behaviors don't make sense anymore. The world is constantly changing, and our internal model that is built on our memories needs to change with it. But the brain needs to be careful. 
too much plasticity, in fact. And you might end up changing and manipulating your memory so much that you swear by things that never happened. You create what we call false memories. Or worse yet, you erase what you have learned. Too little plasticity, on the other hand, and you might not write anything new in your memory record. So when you think about the memory, you might want to think about something like a Wikipedia page. You can write it, you can update it, but there should be a moderator that decides when and to what extent you can actually change. So, in my lab at the Biocentrum at the University of Basel, me and my team are really interested in trying to understand deeply how our brain builds memory and how they change with time. And we use mice as our model organism. Because mice are really good at learning from their own experience, like we are. And when they do something, when they experience something, they create a long-lasting memory of that event. Now, the good thing with mice is that recent technology allows us to look into their brain where they're doing this, when they're creating and remembering things. In fact, we can use genetic engineering to turn neurons into light bulbs, like the one that you see behind me, so that they can glow when they talk to each other. And at the same time, we build windows to look into the mouse brain so that we can see the very essence of memories, neuronal activity, when these memories are formed and remembered. So what we do is that we look and register the patterns of activity that are formed at the moment of memory encoding or formation, and the pattern of activity that are formed when the mouse is recalling that memory. And then we compare them to each other to understand how much they changed, what made them change, and hopefully find some elements that we can manipulate to turn on or off those processes. By this means, in the past years, we have revealed that when we talk about plasticity and memory, not all neurons are the same. Actually, different classes of neurons have different potential for plasticity. And the brain uses a specific class to regulate how much plasticity goes on in the neuronal circuits that are devoted to memory. In fact, we could push this a little bit further. If when we turn those neurons on, we would increase plasticity. The mouse could make new memories, learn something new, create those connections with much more ease. But when we turn them off, everything was more stable, more crystallized and the mouse could not write anymore anything into their brain, but they would be stuck to the memory that had formed. So, I see now that some of you might have some questions. They might think, isn't it scary to think that our memories can change? Memories of our dearest moments, even when we don't want them to. Wouldn't life be so much more logic and simple if memory would not change, and what we learn from the past would always predict the future? Well, I don't think that memory plasticity is something that you should be afraid of. Sure, we give up something by being plastic, but in other words, we need to let go of the past if we want to step into the future. But all of us, every day, experience the benefit that comes from playing with our memories, transforming them into something new. We even have a word for it. We call it imagination. And if it's true that the logic of unchanging relationship can bring you from A to B every time you want, well, imagination can bring you everywhere. Thank you. <laughs>